G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be installing a fixed solar panel to the roof of the canopy. I'll be wiring up to a Red Arc BMS 30. I'll show you how to make those connections, it's pretty easy. We'll go through some joining of cables, inline crimps, Anderson connectors, what the voltages and amp readings on the back of the panel actually mean, pros and cons of fixed solar panels versus solar blankets, and just anything else that comes up regarding solar panels. So for the solar panel, and a drive 180 watt fixed panel. This is a mono panel. So we will weigh it on the scales, but supposedly it weighs about 12 kilos. So I went with Anadrive. They worked out a little bit cheaper. They come with a great warranty and they've got a good reputation. I didn't want to go any of the cheaper brands because a lot of the time they don't reach their advertised outputs. And when they do, they tend to fail after about a year or two years when they're just out of warranty. So the reason I went for this specific one is this is about as large as I can fit on the roof realistically. So without solar panel, if you were parked in one location for a few days and not driving, you'd actually run your battery quite low and risk depleting it completely. What this allows me to do is run a smaller battery. I've only got 125 amp hour lithium rather than having to upgrade to a 200 amp hour lithium, for example. This can help input some juice when I'm not moving around and then any driving that I do will just add on top of that. So to help me make my decision I actually wrote up a comparison which I've written about here as well as a comparison for portable solar panels and solar blankets. I wrote out a little table and sort of compared everything and then I made a scatter plot and to me this kind of showed the inner drive right smack bang in the middle but with one of the best warranties and reputations out there. In hindsight, the KT200 looks like a really good buy, but I didn't know anything about KT at the time. All right, just quickly on the pros and cons, solar blankets versus solar panels that are fixed, like this one. The fixed solar panel will come out cheaper. It'll be working straight away, as in there's no setup time, there's no packing up either. So for the fixed solar panel, things it has to its advantage are price it's a lot cheaper the setup you only set it up once and that is essentially it packing up there is none there is no packing up at the solar panel it starts working straight away depending on your dc dc charger it could even have solar priority like the red arc bms 30 if i'm driving in full daylight it will actually take from the solar before it takes from the alternator in theory reducing fuel consumption which i guess is true but it would be a small difference for the wattage that you get, they're not that heavy compared to some of the portable solar panels. They're a lot lighter than portable ones, but obviously not as light as solar blankets. The downside to the fixed solar panel is that you can't angle it normally without making up brackets and stuff like that, but normally you wouldn't have it angled towards the sun. If you want to park your car in shade so the car doesn't get too hot, then you're really cutting off your solar supply. So solar blankets, they're more expensive take time to set up and pack up as well. When you wanna move, you have to pack it all up. The benefit obviously is that they're lightweight. They can be located in the sun, so you can move them around, you can angle them, you can prop them up on things. Uh, some of the downsides, the cost, the fact that they can and possibly will get stolen if you walk away from a solar blanket that's set up, it could be some cheap comes around and just knocks it off. That's less likely to happen with a fixed panel just cause it's a lot more hassle to do. Of course, if you can afford to, you can combine the two. So you have the solar panel on the roof of your car or canopy. And when you pull up somewhere, you can run a solar blanket out either to double the charge or to park the car in shade and run a blanket out into the sun. So you're still getting that solar feed while you're not driving. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Because I don't use the roof rack for actual tie down, I have everything inside the canopy then it's kind of just wasted space up there. It makes a lot of sense for my particular situation to have a fixed panel. If you had a roof cage and you used your roof for storage and it's always covered, there's no point really in having a fixed solar panel. You'd be better off with a solar blanket or a portable solar panel. Now the best comparisons to make are amongst the same brand. So if we look at Red Arc here, the solar blankets, 160 watt costs you $850 when it's not in the kit, when it's sold by itself. For 180 watt fixed panel, $429. Now Red Arc are a little bit expensive, so there are cheaper options like KT cables. KT 200 watt fixed for about 279. Their 200 watt blanket is normally about 600, but you can pick it up for 500. When I did my comparison, I worked out the average dollars per watt and the average watts per kilo for fixed solar panels and portable panels and solar blankets. So you can see the dollars per watt is a lot higher, but you get more watts per kilos. And I guess a good example of this is the Red Arc 300 watt blanket for only eight and a half kilos. So on the back of the solar panel, we see we've got 180 watts. 
19.3 is the maximum voltage. That works out at 9.33 amps. But if we take that 180 watts and convert it to about 13 volts, which is what the DC-DC charger will convert it to, the theoretical input, depending on the losses involved, is actually somewhere around 13 amps input into the battery. So for every hour of full sunlight, you should get roughly 13 amps or just below. Here we have the dimensions on the back as well as the supposed weight. I've already cut some of these up. That is how much they weigh at the moment. My pre-made Anderson connection, heat shrink and dual wall heat shrink, corrugated tubing, nuts and bolts and two tech screws that I may or may not use. Now the weight of the solar panel Okay, so they both show about the same thing, 11 kilos. For the mounting of the solar panel, I don't have any special brackets or anything like that. I've got these brackets that I bought from Bunnings, they're about $3.20 each. They're plenty strong, they're about three and a half mil thick. They have a official load rating of 150 kilos. Four of these would be fine. I'm probably going to put six in just to be safe. So for the four corners, I'm going to use a nut and bolt for the two middle ones, I'm going to go through with a self-tapping screw. I think it might have a double wall sort of system, so even a tech screw would get a lot of grip and it wouldn't be at risk of coming loose. What I am going to do is chop just above this mounting point, so I have a nice clean finish with the solar panel. I want this solar panel flush on the crossbars. It will still have airflow underneath for cooling, but it won't be lifted up above the roof bars, it'll be flush. An example of one I've already chopped, that in theory is how I want to mount it. Now obviously where you want to be careful is that this whole space behind here isn't free. Approximately 25 to 26 millimeters before we hit the back side of the panel. So that's what that little black mark is. That is the back side of the panel, it's about 25 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is put this on the roof. I'm going to mount all these in place so I know the solar panel is sitting flush on the extrusion crossbars. Then I can mark these holes up, measure that 25 mil, and then make sure my hole does not intrude on the actual back of the solar panel. What I'm going to do on the four corners is go through with the M8 nut and bolt with a nylock washer on the back just to stop anything vibrating loose. Not that I think a tech screw would, but just being extra cautious. So this is roughly where the panel is going to sit. Mark them up here, take it off, drill it, nut and bolt it, put it back on. I think I will go with the six mounting points. I weighed it on the scales, it's only an extra 250 grams, so it's not too much more excess weight. This really does take up almost all of the available space on the rack, but I don't really have any plans to tie anything down up here. Just got a UHF aerial to mount at the front there, and that should be it for the roof of the canopy. So you'll notice these cables coming out here are actually long enough to reach this. So I could just fit an Anderson plug to this. But the reason I want to change it is because I'm not sold on this being the final position. I used to have it mounted down lower where I could actually disconnect and connect from the ground. In the future I might do that again because that's where I would do any connections for a solar blanket if I had any. At the moment I ran it up here because I don't have a solar blanket anyway. This is nice and out of the way. I'm going to still use the Anderson plug with the 8 gauge. I'll leave enough length on that 8 gauge that it can loop down and connect in there just in case I ever want to change it. So I went through and marked the solar panel on the roof. Unfortunately, where I wanted the original hole, 
It's a little bit too close to the panel itself. So I've drilled new holes through the brackets to bring the nut and bolt a bit further out. This will allow me to put washers on the other side and it'll just make everything clearance wise a little bit easier. I labeled each bracket so I know that they go back in the right spot because some of these holes that I drilled in the brackets themselves are a little bit off. It's just a bit of a rush job. In my excitement, I drilled out the middle holes so that will no longer be a tech screw. It'll either be nothing or it'll be a nut and bolt. As expected, this side wall is a double wall. It's not a lot to these side walls, so we don't want to over crank the bolts and the nuts because it will actually probably collapse this. It's quite soft aluminium. So a couple of weeks ago, I actually had the headboard off and I ran the solar feeds from the Red Arc BMS30 out of the canopy to an Anderson connector. Flashback. So before we put the headboard on, we just want to do our solar feeds. So I'll be running to an Anderson plug. I'll be putting a dust boot on, extra protection, because it will be mounted outside the canopy. I'll be connecting eight gauge cable, which is more than enough for what we need. The reason I'm using eight gauge is because the Anderson plugs I'm using are eight gauge. So I think that gives me the best connection. You can use smaller cables and crimp to different sizes, but I'll just go ahead and use the eight gauge. So from the Red Arc BMS30, we have our solar connection on the output connector. That will be to the red of the plug and the black just goes to a ground connection. So in my instance, I'll be running that ground connection to the battery shunt where all my other ground connections are. As for the plug itself, it will exit the back of the canopy and I'll either hang it here or I'll cable tie it up here but there'll be enough length on it anyway that if I wanted to move it up to here I could. Once the panel's installed that cable will come in and connect into the bottom. This is non-split Cori all the way into the cab and then all the cables have non-split Cori exiting through dual wall heat shrink so everything's waterproof through IP68 glands. I've got my two solar cables here I just need to add protection to the negative. These will be tied to the back of the headboard and they will come out holes in the headboard. End of flashback. Now all I have to do is attach this Anderson connector with eight gauge cable and make an inline joint into the supplied solar panel cables, wrap it all up in non-split Cori with some double wall heat shrink and we have a fully sealed system to the Anderson plug and then I can plug that in and out if I ever want to disconnect the solar panel. One of the best things about that is that I can plug in a parallel piggyback connector and then I can have my fixed panel along with a solar blanket in parallel and I can increase the input into the battery. These cables will get chopped. I'll put an inline crimp in place, connecting it to this Anderson plug. This cable is supposedly four mil squared. This cable is eight gauge, which is about eight mil squared. These are eight gauge inline crimps, four mil squared, double over and crimp, eight gauge straight in and crimped. And there is my connection. Now in regards to these two cables, you might remember how they went on the roof. That was just long enough to reach the Anderson plug. So all I'm gonna do is chop these, make my inline joint here, and then I make this length of cable in eight gauge equal to the length of the part that I've cut, plus the additional length that I wanted to allow for me to move that Anderson plug in the future down to the front wall of the canopy. Add the dust boot cover, and then that'll be the cable. So what I'm hoping to do is bend this over four mil squared, should be roughly eight mil squared, depending on how tight I can get the bend. This is an eight gauge crimp, which should allow for 8.3 mil. That way I can crimp it at exactly eight mil. It should be a good solid connection. The other cable is eight gauge, so it won't need any treatment. It'll just go straight in. Insulation of these cables is quite thick. So you just gotta be careful when you're digging into it that you don't get carried away and nick the copper. So any heat shrink that I wanna put on here, I either need to make sure it goes over these lugs or I need to slide it on before I make the final lug. The cable is butted up as far as it can go. It's bent over, makes it about eight mil squared. Now I can just crimp it with an eight mil die. It's not going anywhere. Cool, nice and secure. This ray cam here is just to cover the join. On the end of this sealed conduit, I've got more ray cam. That's to cover from the conduit to the cable. Ordinarily, I wouldn't terminate it this way. I would do the Anderson plug at the end, but because I made up an Anderson plug already, I thought I'd reuse it. Now we've made our crimps. They're very secure, they're not going anywhere. Seal that, make it waterproof so there's no exposed copper. Now we can refit the Anderson plug, and then we can set the length of the sealed conduit, and we can seal up both ends, and that'll be good to go. Make sure we get our polarity correct, and that we've got no twists in the cable. Now I'll just move the 
conjure it towards this end, just so we have as much mechanical protection as possible, because this is protected by the solar panel itself. So now that this end is sealed, I can seal up this end. Probably would have liked another 100 mil on the conduit, but I normally wouldn't have had the Anderson plug already fitted off. I would have fit that off afterwards. So what I might do is add a little bit of non-split cable tied onto there. This is overkill by the way. This insulation is incredibly thick, considering this is four mil squared and this is eight mil squared and the outside diameter is the same. You can see how thick the insulation is on this solar cable. The non-split core is not necessary at all, but it just finishes everything off nice and neatly. Hello. Now I'm just gonna put everything in place, then I'll take them back out, put a bit of Loctite 243 on them, just as a little bit of an anti-vibration measure. Hopefully I never have to touch them again. Got the cable there, run it out, plug it in, and that is it. Maybe give this a bit of a wipe down because I've sort of got my grubby little finger marks all over it. And then the only thing left to do after that is actually take it out in the sun and test that it works. Oh. There is blood involved in that. Now from my experience, getting blood on the solar panel does not make it perform better. And getting locked tight in open wounds is not recommended. It's not part of the directions on the back. All right, we'll see how we go. So far from perfect, but perfect from afar. But she's not going anywhere. That's all that matters, isn't it? All that matters is that she doesn't go anywhere. All right, we'll tie her in. I think I've stopped bleeding now. Here's the final look at the solar panel installed. Now the cables I have tied in in a semi-permanent way because I think it'll be a long time before I need to change them. Covered any exposed parts in split tubing, the parts that weren't covered by the non-split tubing. Now I finished the job up at night time, so this is the following day. I just reversed out the driveway, 10 a.m. Got 162 watts input, and that's 18.3 volts at the moment, putting in 11.4 amps. Give it another two hours, and I think we would be approaching the maximum 180 watts, as well as the maximum theoretical input of about 13 amps at midday. Now in heat shrink, dual wall and normal, 14 grams have been added. For our cable Anderson connector we made up, we added 303 grams. The solar panel added 10.89 once we subtract the cut cable. We added 450 grams worth of brackets and 425 grams worth of channel nuts, bolts, washers, etc. For the corrugated tubing, we added 72 grams. Now if we subtract the channel closure that we removed from the car, that gives us a combined total of 11.879 kilos added. So there you have it, there's the final weights added to the car. So I'll pop a little price list up here. We've gone through the brackets and the panel, but on top of that we've used an Anderson connector, some dual heat shrink, some 8mm bolts and washers and channel nuts, it'll all be up here. So that's it for solar panels. You don't need to spend too much on mounting solutions. Depending on your roof rack system, if it's extrusion based or channel based, you could probably do something similar for quite cheap. There's plenty of airflow around the panel, but it keeps a nice low profile. So we'll jump to the end screen now. We'll look at the running costs and weights. solar panel for getting solar power. So for the solar panel, what I am going to do, that would, now we can refit the Anderson, the non-split core in the panel and, but I'm,